I'm kind of digging the live, laugh, vibe up. Live, laugh, love, vibe up. Live, laugh, love, vibes. <laughs> You're listening to the Beer Mile Podcast. What's up, boys and girls? That's a fun sound. Add that to like a sound. That, this is like, it's like a popping bubble wrap. It's like it, the it, same It has pleasure. the same level of satisfaction, yeah. that's for sure. So for those of our audio only listeners, we are messing around with uh, the sponsor of today's episode. The Kong, baby. I thought the Kong was a dog toy, but this is a portable uh, beer pong guy. Not beer pong, oh, beer, beer pong. <laughs> He's, you got beer pong on the brain because we just talked to we Devin talked about, about beer pong, beer pong right? at the Rio Olympics. But, but just looking at these things, these are pretty sweet. These are sweet. So let's demonstrate for those on video. And guess what? Spotify now has video versions of podcasts. So if you're on Spotify, you get to see it. And you can also give a five star review on Spotify now. Another new feature. New pretty fucking dope. So here we go. We've got the Kong. Let me demonstrate your beer bong on the go. You twist twist and boop. that's it look at that all right let's let's test it out let's show him what's up do you know the guy on tiktok that cooks that has like a mullet and he while he's cooking something he says while we wait we hydrate and he wears a beer belt and he he has a kong oh all right like all right. that's how i first saw a kong was this dude on tiktok let's get it dude and while we wait we hydrate Check out the Kong, they on my link. You gotta stay hydrated while you cook. Man, you don't know about the Kong, dude? I'm about to learn you something. You get this little chit-chit right here. You put that little chit-chit right there. Look what you got. Come see, come see, boy, look. Let's get it, dude. Dude, you're at TikTok. Remember to do it. Yeah. Well, this guy comes up all the time because I like food. I like beer. And I like beer. So this guy, he, he feeds my algorithm nicely. <laughs> So he just throws the stuff in the oven or whatever, and he's like, while we wait, we time to, time to get drunk. A few minutes later. All right, right. down the hatch. Let's go. Dude, the flow rate on that was sick. Yeah, just conged it. I, I feel like it's been a while since that's, I've done a beer that's bong. A, that's a nice toy. Yeah, I have not done a beer bong in many, many years, but good stuff. Thanks, the Kong. Uh, I don't know what your website is off the top of my head, but shout out to you. You guys can find it. Thanks for, spo <laughs> thanks for sponsoring the episode. Thanks for sponsoring this episode. Uh, Devin Allen on the pod today. I don't even know where to begin, man. Man, he. so we, we interrupt. To, to start off the podcast, we apparently interrupted in a good way his game with Matt Centrowitz because he wasn't doing too hot. He was getting his cheeks clapped in so, Halo Infinite. I hope that he appreciates that we, you know, help Give him a nice bring break. up his mood a little bit. Yeah, hopefully, you know? hopefully got his ego flowing. He's going to go back on tonight and I, I have faith he's he's going to break through yeah. to Onyx later this year. Yeah, we loosened him up a little bit, you know, <laughs> got him a little bit chilled out. It was fun. We didn't even, uh, I think for the first time ever on a podcast, we never actually like introduced ourselves or said like, hey, That's we're recording the podcast. Actually. We literally, the second that we started talking, we just- That's a good point. We just were in the podcast. We were know? flowing. Flow state. No introduction needed. It was fun. I mean, he's a, he's a very cool, charismatic guy. Absolutely. Going to be hype when he becomes a three sport pro athlete <laughs> in track in NFL and then golf, his newfound passion. And, and we, yeah, we get we get so many good stories about his his Rio trip. I think it's a good Tokyo Olympics. I'm always interested about uh, like as a distance runner, um, always interested about like the different sprinter lifestyle, other I don't yeah. know, just a lot of shit going on. Yeah, I, I fully appreciate, especially after talking to him. But even before that, the hurdling as an event, because it's. Like it, it's, it's the sprinting piece of it, but then the technique piece of it, the technique. jumping piece of it. There's technique. so many technique. Uh, I've I've hit my shins on too many, it, like and and too many is like four. Yeah, when I, we're fucking around. Yeah. I was like that. I, I don't really like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this discussion with Devin speaks for itself. We don't need to do any more uh, babbling here to intro it. Um, we are going to at the end of the show. Uh, do in, in honor of Devin. in honor of Devin his his latest favorite drink, the tequila water. 
So we're going to give our, it an that's honest That's our shot. beer review after <laughs> the interview. He says it's surprisingly decent, and because you don't have any uh, mixies with sugar or anything, hey, your hangover is going to be... If I mean, I'm, if I'm we're, hung, not, we're, not, we're not condoning drinking this, if but I'm hangover is going to be a little bit better. If I'm hungover tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to email him. I'm, oh, I'm going to get on Halo and find him. And then like, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. <laughs> Just start shitting on him. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Uh, Patreon.com slash Beer Mile if you want to get the uncut, uncensored version of podcasts. Get some nudes or uh, OnlyFans is where we do that. <laughs> Wrong site. OnlyFans.com slash Beer Dash Mile. <laughs> beer Dash Mile Dash Nudes. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you did not listen to our last episode with... Um, West Fly, Mr. Oh, please Dragon do. Energy. Dragon. Uh, that the full uncut version of that is on Patreon, which has a lot more stuff in it than that what is, is on the YouTube version. And we have the chug off. Beef was settled. Everett got owned. Call it call it like it is. You know, what can we say? But I still want to race him in a beer mile. We got two thousand dollars on the line next year. Whenever he's done running around in circles on a track and can actually face up to the challenges that he ready to run circles around a track, but with beer. Exactly. Well, same same thing, but yeah. completely different. Shout out to Craig Light. Afraid to drink a Bud Light. Craig, did I just say Craig Light? Oh my goodness. I, shout out to Craig Angles. Afraid to drink a Bud I Light. I thought you were gonna say shout out to Craig Light. Afraid to drink a Bud Angles, and I was like, I wish I would have thought of that. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is off the chain. Anyway, let's dive into this conversation with Mr. Devin Allen. So who are you playing Halo with before this? Friends or randos? Yeah, actually, uh, this is a good one. I'm playing with my buddy, AJ LaPre, who played basketball um, at Oregon and um, Rice, and then Matt Centro. Oh, seen that really? Where, where okay. You play, you, know? uh, you play ranked? We do. We were playing ranked. And we actually we were on like a what, – what made it feel bad was because we were on like a six or seven game win streak. And then I actually absolutely had the worst game of my career. And I was like, you know what? I got to go. I got to podcast in five minutes. <laughs> so, so so who's better, you or Centro? Uh, to be honest, Centro, but he probably spent okay. more time doing it. Uh, okay. What, um, what, he doesn't have a life. For the, for the non-Halo <laughs> people, what, what rank is he? Um, Halo, he is, I think, Onyx, like 15 or 16. Shut the fuck up. Um, He's yeah, Onyx. Well, so all, yeah, all my friends I play with are Onyx, and then I'm like a Diamond Three. So that's disgusting. <laughs> I, I feel like Centro probably does train less overall time than you. That's my guess. I I would assume that with hurdling, there's so much technique stuff and like work. Like you got so much more lifting and plyos and all those different things. I think distance running, you can really only do so much before you yeah. like start hurting yourself. So yeah, I don't know. Actually, that's a good point. I would say because it takes me like 50 minutes to warm up for my hurdle workout. Exactly. And then yeah. by the time I start, my hurdle workout takes me another hour. And then after that, I got plyos and then weightlifting for an hour, two hours. And so, I mean, it depends on the day, obviously. If, if Matt's doing like a, a 10 or 15 mile run, then he might have me on the day. But overall, probably, yes, you, you guys are right. True. On his days, yeah. On his days where he's just going out for a couple 45 minute runs with a nap in Halo in between. He's got he's got a pretty <laughs> chill life some days. Yeah. <laughs> some days yeah. he's really, really uh, gutting it out. But. Well, yeah, some days I'm, I hit him up. And he's like, oh, I can't, bro. I'm training. I'm like, oh, you <laughs> This guy. This guy. The Olympic gold medalist doesn't train. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot. Most So most of our listeners are uh, more on the distance side of track, I'd say. Um, so pro- a lot of Centro fans out there for sure. But uh, I, I don't know. I what, like, what is your perception as a sprinter, a hurdler? Like, what do you think of, of distance guys in general? Hey, I, I got love for the distance. Um, okay. One of my best friends, Clayton Murphy, obviously, you yep, would say. Yep. 800 is distance. It's kind of the tweener event. Uh, obviously, Matt Central's my boy. Um, you know, and those, and he went to Oregon. We weren't there at the same time, but obviously, you know, being both Oregon alum and just like making world champ and Olympic teams and stuff together, so we get to hang out. Um, my overall perception of distance athletes from the beginning is all distance athletes are smarter, the smartest people on the team <laughs> for sure. 
Um, and they also go the hardest. So it's kind of, it's kind of fitting that you guys say the beer yeah. mile podcast, because <laughs> every time I've seen like track athletes going hard, it's always distance guys. See, yeah, that's hilarious. I would, I would completely agree with that. Seeing how, yeah, seeing how distance guys behave, like NCAA cross country was recently. And I heard that the oh, after yeah. party there was just absolutely <laughs> savage, like people on another level. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is about distance runners. I guess they just have that stamina to keep going all night. Cause that, that's what they practice day I've, in, day out. I've never know. seen people who like, don't look like they should be able to drink a lot of alcohol, drink that much alcohol. Yeah. yeah. No. And that's kind of. That's the thing. Yeah. I've seen some guys, I'm not going to name them on the podcast. Out loud, but <laughs> yeah, <fair> some, enough. <laughs> some guys I went to school with that I'm like, geez, man, this guy goes hard a lot. And then they get yeah. running around winning, winning meets and stuff like that. And we're like, Oh, okay. For sure. Well, I don't, I don't know if one of the ones you're thinking of is Eric Jenkins, but he was a previous podcast guest of ours. And he, he told his own stories of all the <laughs> crazy crap that he used to do. So, um, yeah, if, if, if he's one of the names, he's already thrown himself under the yeah, bus yeah, on okay. a previous <laughs> episode. So get them under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing too is most of the guys are pros now too so that's kind of what we do yeah. post meet you know like some most of the meets maybe not with COVID as much the last couple of years but before that uh, most of the meets have like an after party reception at least and that starts as like a dinner but then everybody starts drinking and For you sure. know people are like don't you ever meet in two days ah whatever <laughs> <laughs> what uh com- compared to football like college ball players uh who parties harder that's tough. I would say like the amount of the, the people that drink the most, right, are probably distance runners on the track side and then offensive linemen on okay. the <laughs> football side. See, you would ex- and, I would and, expect and, that. You know, yeah. I would expect that. And, exactly. And I was going to say that it's very cliche, but the only time the only times I've seen like, you know, like where they try to do the century club or whatever it's called, where they drink like a hundred beers or or you know whatever in an hour is only offensive linemen, um, not even D linemen. Right, D line been a little more low key in my opinion, but yeah, the O line guys, and then and then even just hanging out, they're they're more apt to you know order a beer or five at, at dinner. <laughs> you know, like I was actually I was actually at uh, in Portland for um, some business stuff, like about five days before the Olympic trials, my race started. So I go to dinner with my buddies. Like, oh, let's, let's get some drinks. I'm like, dude, I got a race in five days. <laughs> and they're like going hard. I'm like, oh God, it's like a Tuesday. <laughs> I in relax. The, in the Olympic trials, nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with, with football, would it be like typically like after every game that, you know, the team would like basically, I don't know, celebrate the week of work. And especially if you won or was, was there like, extra special celebration around conferences and, uh, you know, nationals or bowl games or whatever it is. I would say this extra celebration around wins in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just cause I'm, like for the most part, and I'm not going to say like a hundred percent cause I don't know every guy's, every guy's life, but I'm not drinking during the week at all. Yeah. yeah. Right. Until, until after the game on Saturday and then, you know, you celebrate and then Sunday we have meetings and stuff like that. So there's not really time to do all that either. Um, So I think everybody kind of saves it. It just goes pretty hard on Saturday. Um, We have, we have went out like after a loss, but it's not as fun. Never. Um, (laughs) It's kind of like awkward. Really? Like no one really wants to go out after a loss, but they're like, Oh, it's Halloween, you know, like we got to go out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or exactly. something like that, right? <laughs> exactly. There, there was a couple. So we, we both went to Iowa State and there was uh, oh, nice. so I can't even remember who I knew in one of the apartment buildings that knew all the basketball team. Oh. And it was like one of my earlier years at Iowa State when the team was terrible and we'd always see them out going hard after games, but they were losing like every game. And I was just thinking to myself, like, what are you guys doing? Like, you, less guys, time you guys lose bar. every single game yeah. and you're out here partying like you didn't lose a game tonight. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Yeah. I, and that's. <laughs> And that's the sentiment really is like, you know, people looking the outside in and they're like, what are these guys doing? Yeah. Like, you know, even, <laughs> even track wise, you know, if, if it was, you know, Eric was drinking a whole bunch of going crazy and not winning, then people would be like, okay, whoa. Yeah. Sure. Is, who cares? Sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When you're at the top of the game, you're at the top of the game. <laughs> yeah. In the, I guess in the Oregon area, what are like, um, Oregon University area specifically, what uh, what it kind of like? What are the bars, the hot spots that you guys go to, or is is the college more of like a I don't know house party vibe type of situation? Um, it's kind of tough. It's a it's a little bit of both. Um, I didn't start drinking until I was twenty one, and that's just 
you know, I'm not going to say that for not, the podcast, but, not that, is the podcast, but no, sure. no, no, <laughs> yeah. that is the truth. But you know, once I turned 21, I started doing the going out thing. And that's when I started going to the bars because, you know, I was allowed to get in. Uh, but shoot, my first two years in college, it was all house parties, which to be honest, are, are usually more fun. Um, yeah. I would say yeah, I'm, with, I'm like, with you on that. Yeah. It's, it's like more low key. You spend less money, like usually more people, you know, there. Um, exactly. And then, but there's some good spots in, in Oregon and actually one of them got closed down. RIP Taylor's Bar and Grill. <laughs> yep. um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you heard about it. I've heard, heard stories, never got yeah. to go, but I've heard stories. So, yeah. And then there's a, there's a couple other places, McMinimums um, was like a nice little bar and grill by my house. So we would like just go hang out there, throw darts and play pool and stuff like that. And they have great food. So, you know, that's a shout out um, to McMinimum. So if you're in Eugene, yeah. that place is fire. There we go. Going like, uh, it's always weird going back to school after you've graduated and you have adult money um, <laughs> for like for Very bars true. and stuff. Have you, have you been back to Oregon and had, had a night out when you're actually making money? Yeah, um, I have post, you know, post college career, but luckily it didn't really matter at that, at that time. Like it was just post like playing football and, um, just making my first Olympic team. So, I was still getting free drinks and stuff. So nah, it's not like I, I really had to uh, pay <laughs> for a whole that. just not yeah, too I mean, shabby. <laughs> but it, it's definitely, you know, like I've gone out in Phoenix where I'm from in Arizona when, you know, no one knows me. And I'm like, damn, I spent like $400. Yeah. To, for real. To, I'm like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> yeah. I only, I, you know, I only had like, you know, I bought drinks for all my friends or whatever. And like, there's five of us. And then, you know, I end up having four or five. And I'm like, I only, you know, $20 a drink. Holy crap. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it sucks. So I'm really curious. So you obviously you ultimately chose track over football as the sport you wanted to pursue. Like it seems like the I don't know, the vibe and kind of maybe the even the excitement level to some extent is like pretty different between the two. Like football, very like you have the team atmosphere, the camaraderie, like very, I don't know, a lot more hype, like obviously more fans than track. But then you ultimately kind of chose the track route. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess just from like the energy perspective, like, is that how you feel as a player as well? Like football just has like way more energy. Like, does it excite you a lot more or, or do you feel that in track similarly? Um, I mean, overall, usually the, the atmosphere at a football game, especially at an Oregon one, is very like elite oh, yeah. and probably one of the best in, in the world. Um, in my opinion, track fans, though, are more diehard. Um, you know, if they're coming to a track meet, they're like they know what's going on. Yeah, they yeah. know what's going on. They're committed to this. Like there's no uh, charter, no charter buses straight to <laughs> straight to there. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's the cool thing this year. I actually had, you know, one of my best seasons uh, um, as a professional. I ended up ranked number one in the world in the hurdles. And at the Diamond League final, there's like 80,000 people. You know, and to win it, yeah. to win the race there, I'm like, holy crap. Like it was like, it was super loud. Like everybody was like cheering. So it, it felt like the same atmosphere as like scoring a touchdown, you know, at, at, uh, Austin stadium. Um, but it's kind of hard because college football and the NFL are a lot different as well, because in college you have that, uh, like alumni, you know, like ride or die fan like i went to oregon so i'm an oregon fan like that's right, just sure, right. what it is like no no one can talk crap about oregon but like in the nfl it's kind of like oh i like tom brady so i'm yeah, going yeah. to the Bucks game right yeah. which, which is okay too but it's you know a little bit less rowdy it gets more rowdy in college games um, yeah. in my opinion yeah definitely yeah i guess i, I guess my perspective is off because i've never been to like a diamond league event in europe and track over there is like way more of a giant sport than it is uh at the meets here so yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess i don't ever take that perspective into account yeah, there are, that, got, there are that many people count. that yeah yeah so is that or would you say the diamond league meets and jet well besides the olympics <laughs> olympics aside would you say the diamond league meets are like the what get are the most hype like that gets you the most excited yeah, or are there some sure. other are, are there any meets in the u.s that are like top notch in your mind that you like going to um so yeah i mean the diamond league they do a really good job obviously they have you know each country or each place has one meet a year. So they focus all their money and marketing towards that. And it's, I've never run out of diamond league that's not sold out. Right. So um, that's obviously a great feeling is just have a full stadium. Um, places that really are exciting, right. You, Hayward field, obviously that's, that's cliche. Um, Drake, the Drake relays does an amazing job. Um, and I know you guys are Midwest guys. Heck yeah. We're corn um, guys. Corn <laughs> guys. Um, yeah. So 
you know, the Drake relays and even, even during COVID, they did an amazing job. Yeah. Um, yeah just getting people to show up and, and be fans. Um, and a lot of people, just a lot of history with that. I've never been to pin, pin relays, uh, but I, I'm going to try to get there, you know, at least once or twice in my career, um, just because I've seen it on TV and that looks insane. Um, yeah. especially like the USA versus the world competition. Sure. Yeah. So, I think that was but, probably uh, one of the first, um, flow tracks that I ever saw was like some old school Penn State relays. Yeah. yeah. And I love, I love that they have some, yeah. Like the USA versus the world, they have the, like for distance guys, they have the four by mile, which you don't get that anywhere else. Exactly. You, get, you get some cool, like unique events that you wouldn't see any place. I like else. when you do the, uh, wow, what's the hurdle event where it's back and forth? The shuttle, the shuttle oh, hurdle relay. Un- underrated yeah. event. You know, we're trying to, you know, and maybe this, this will help, you know, the viewers out there, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah, we, right. know, we know that you are. Um, <laughs> Uh, if we're trying to get like a really competitive shuttle hurdle relay, just because the last four or five years, right. It's been USA and Jamaica, very competitive. Right. Um, and then the French always have a lot of good hurdlers. There's the, the young kid, Sasha Zoya that just broke the world junior record in 1270, whatever. Holy and so, shit. you know, we're trying to get, we're, it would be really cool if we had like a, a shuttle hurdle relay with me, Grant Holloway, Daniel Roberts, um, and a fourth. And then against Omar McLeod, Hansel Parchment, you know, uh, Ronald Levy and, a, you know, the fourth uh, Jamaican as well, like super competitive to break to break a world record. Um, so we're trying to actually talk one of those those meets, Drake relays or pin relays into doing something like that. Um, but it's, it is very hard to get everybody coordinated. Um, yeah. And then a yeah, lot of those guys. the amount of athletes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And those guys are, are professional, too. So they don't want to just like mess up their training block or whatever and just you know for uh, you know they want to get paid of that's course just, that's just how it goes so <laughs> yeah we gotta we gotta work on that too like budget wise and but you know we got some time yeah I, f- I feel like stuff like that though would help the sport grow a lot more in the u.s just like having yeah. having those like competition outside of the norm competition instead of just you know individuals against individuals all the time which is awesome i mean i love watching that but having more of the team uh like aspect of it more relays uh i think that'd be an awesome olympic event too so. oh for sure yeah. like it, it, it would be cool if you could like somehow it, it is very hard because i just know the egos of some athletes right like right. you know get the 100 meter guys that just ran the 100 and then you know you know get them in a full hour one yeah yeah so, so at, at some point during the meet right you know just get them to compete or whatever or full hour four with the 800 meter guys and the 400 meter guys and the 400 meter hurdle guys um but you never know. Um, the, the sport is definitely kind of evolving into, you know, more of a spectacle um, where they're trying to, you know, get some different events and get some, you know, interesting stuff on, on TV. And, you know, there was talks, uh, I know Grant Holloway and Ryan Benjamin were talking about a 200 meter hurdle race. Um, you know, I'm trying to get in that as well. That'd be very fun to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if we could throw some throw some money at it to get it on TV and, and to get it marketed up. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, with the, ama- watch. with the amount of like retweets and engagement I saw with that, I, I would, yeah. there's no, there's no way you wouldn't make the money. And, and, and the only issue, the only issue there is right. Like you got to decide if it's going to be on a curve right. you know, or you're going you to build a 200 meter straight, straight, which they yeah. already do for a few meets and, you know, Grant uh, sponsored Adidas. They already do like, a similar, you know, kind of track thing. So maybe that's, that's the meet we do it at, yeah. um, you know, it'd be good to beat down Grant at his, at his Adidas meet as a Nike athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Have, when's the last time you've run like longer than the one tens? Have you done with like your last 400 hurdles? Like when's the last time you've run a curve with hurdles? Uh, college. Okay. Yeah. yeah last time I ran the 400 was, uh, yeah, I got second the, yeah, at, uh, pac 12s. <laughs> okay uh, my freshman year in college so it's been gotcha. a, it's been a while i've run a couple 200s um since then i ran that a little bit and uh in like my senior year junior and senior year in college um i actually won the pac 12 champ so i, I always uh say that to me andre de grass and michael norman have something in common we're all pac 12 champs in the 200 so there we go <laughs> pretty Man, good what a that's that's pretty good <laughs> mount rushmore to be up against yeah exactly <laughs> sure. so um but yeah, I haven't run much further than that, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Actually, one of our listener questions, shout out Ruby. She said, how, how fast do you think you could run right now for 400 hurdles and for open four? I guess maybe like, not right now, but like, say like, you know, your, your Olympic shape. Yeah. Your Olympic okay. shape. Uh, I think 
For sure. If I ran an open four, I could run into 45 seconds. Okay. Yep. hundred percent. Obviously I think I do have the speed to run faster than that. It's just, do, you know, do I ever get there? Maybe, maybe not. The 400 hurdles are a little bit more difficult um, just because I run the 400 hurdles and, and not, not that it's the most difficult event. Technically it is very, it takes some time to get it right. Um, and I just never took the time in college to ever try to get it right. So I would just have no idea. Um, yeah. You know, if, you know, if I figured it out, maybe I run 46 or 40, you know, <laughs> but if I don't figure it out, I'll run 52. So, right. you know, yeah. So much, yeah. So much about the steps. So I'm did, a, yeah, I'm always curious, like what's the margin of error, like for the 110 versus the 400 meter hurdles? Like, I, I guess for, for running, like if you're running a, an 800, I feel like there is basically zero room for error. Whereas like, if you go all the way up to the marathon, you can kind of fuck around every now and then and, and eventually come back from it. I see what you're saying. Like on, a, does, on a relative scale, yeah, like but the how does that scale for like hurdles? So much more, yeah. 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 I would say the one tens are definitely the, the least margin of error event probably in track. Um, just because, I mean, you can't hit them and still run fast, but you don't see a lot of, um, you know, championships being won and meets being won where there's a lot of hurdles on the ground by the winner. Um, right. and, in the 400 hurdles, obviously the hurdlers, the hurdles are lower. Um, the, the really good guys right now are just so fast that it's really just the hurdle is just like in the way yeah. they're just trying to, they're just trying to get off, get out, get it back onto the ground as quickly as possible. Where as the hurdles and the one tens are so high, it's, it's a lot more technical and you had to spend a lot of time practicing practicing that skill yeah How, do you think that you would ever step up like or like test it out and just see like what what if you are like even better at the 400 hurdles like as you age and like build up your endurance and all that like have, have you thought about that at all like testing it out just to see you know i, I didn't until just now and i'm i'm for it all uh, right i mean carson warholm's looking looking like he's ready to be taken down i don't know yeah i, feel like. I mean here, here's the only thing is i've trained for the 400 hurdles before yeah. And I just don't want to, <laughs> you know, and I'm, and, and I'm doing well enough in the one tens that like, Hey, this could be, this could be my sweet spot. Not that yeah. I don't like to hurt. Not that I don't like to work hard. It's just, it's, it's so different. The training between the one tens and the 400 hurdles that, um, it would be, be very hard to be a lead at both at the same time. If that makes sense. Definitely. Yeah. So I, a lot of our listeners are like mid D or D guys. So how, like what would that difference be like say one of your hard days on the track working out like what is what is the running portion of the workout look like for like your event versus 400 hurdles yeah like probably my hardest my hardest workouts i would say it's probably like 150 repeats okay so yeah. like usually usually the one i throw up on the most is like six six to eight by 150 um and obviously that's more of like a cns thing central nervous system thing because mm -hmm. um, i'm running full speed for all those reps so by the time, you know, four or five hit, I'm just like drained, like yeah. physically, not that I'm super tired. Um, and then you just kind of just, it makes you vomit. Um, but the hardest workout, usually like longer distance, the, the furthest I run, um, is probably like 300 meters. Like that's about the max. And I might do like a 300, a 200 and a 150. Like, yeah. you know, usually I stay, I try to stay like 900 meters or less in a total day for volume, especially in spikes. You know, right. I'm God, cause I've had like 2018, 2019, 2020, I had like an Achilles issue. So, you know, I try yeah. to like limit the amount of time I'm in spikes, not hurdling or sprinting fast. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's just, that's just such a different game. Like running, running a, like a what, half mile, what, like yeah, only 1K. a half mile day, but you're like, you're obviously you're training a lot. Um, so there's just so, so much that goes into the technique and strength and everything else. That's yeah. Just, like it's hard to even fathom for me. <laughs> Today, today's workout was probably like on my larger volume side, right? And I did um, 80, 120, 120, 80 hills. Like, so just two sets of that. So that's 800 meters total. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be like, you know, a bigger volume day for me just in general. So that's, that's funny that you mentioned the six to eight at uh, for 150. That was like in high school, the one workout where we did like, we would always talk shit with the sprinters and we did. <laughs> we made the agreement where we would do one of their workouts and they would do one of our workouts. And that was the one that we did. And so many distance guys threw up that day. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's something about like just sprinting fast for more than like one or two efforts. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, in a, in a workout, right? Like I've done a distance workout. One of my favorite workouts actually like for recovery was the repeat twos. Right. And you guys have all done that. If you yeah. ran mm-hmm. distance, yeah. you know, where you do like 22s twos or right. 15 twos when you're like, you know, on the minute where you like jog across the field, you know, you go half track to half track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, that, that workout sounds hard on paper, but once you get in the groove, it's like, you start feeling good. You kind of forget. Yeah. Like 10, like 10 in, you're like, damn, like, I'm yeah, already, yeah, like I'm 26, already 27, yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm at 27 <laughs> seconds repeats. I'm ready for the eight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 uh, go, going back to like your, your football track, um, like training for the two of them at the same time while at Oregon, what were the, were your coaches? Like, I'm assuming that you had practice for both of them in the same day, much of the time. Like I, I, I would assume like basically at the college level, pretty much everything is year round for the most part. And so I was, just, I'm assuming you're kind of doing both at the same time. So are the coaches like kind of talking to each other and making sure they don't like kill you basically like overwork you by doing double work or how did, how did that work out? Or is the, I guess is enough of the training similar because you're going to lift in football, you're going to lift in track, you're going to sprint in both it is enough of it similar that you're kind of the workout essentially is the same for both. But then you have just like the s- specific skills for hurdling and the specific skills for like watching tape and all of that. Yeah. Um, you actually, yeah, you put, you probably nailed it right on the head. Um, coach rad, um, Jimmy Radcliffe, he was a weight coach at Oregon when I was there and he was a football weight coach and the track weight coach. So he, he catered weight programs kind of towards me doing both, right? Like being strong, explosive and fast. Um, the biggest, the biggest issue or difference, I wouldn't even say an issue. Um, the coaches communicated great, you know, that, you know, and they were like, Hey, this is what Devin's doing. Like it is what it is track season, you know, NCAAs, he needs to back off you know, football, you need to not do any football, like a couple of weeks out from the national championship, obviously. Yeah. Um, right. And same thing during football season, I wasn't doing any track, no, no track workouts really um, until January um, after the bowl game. Um, but the only thing was just the time aspect of it. Right. So I'm, you know, during, during the spring actually was my most busy time because I was doing both to where I have football, like in the mornings uh, meetings and stuff like six to 11, where we had practice. Then I'll go to class from like 12 to two and then have track practice from like two to four ish. And then have class from like four to, you know, five 30, five 50, and then have meetings at six and then go to dinner and then go home at like eight or nine and then, you know, do it every day. It's a big day. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was like the biggest thing. And obviously both of the coaches kind of understood like, all right, Devin, you know, maybe you don't need to take as many reps today on the football field. And hey, you know, my coach, you know, Coach Cook at Oregon at the track team was like, oh, hey, maybe you did some like this is what you did at football today. Let's take it easier and let's let's do more technical stuff or let's just do some plyometric based stuff or, you know, whatever. So I think we did a really good job because for the most part, other than like my, you know, non-contact ACL injuries, I didn't have any injuries in college where I like, you know, nagging like hamstrings or whatever. Um, so yeah, I would say they nailed it right on the head with just communicating and then Coach Radcliffe being the mediator and keeping me healthy for the most part. Because that's the most important thing, right? Absolutely. Like, and to yep. some extent, I'm talented. I was talented enough to like probably run like 13, 30 without training at all. You know, just yep. like, you know, like once once a week, maybe if I just hurdled then. Yep. But that's not really the goal. The goal is to like, you know, front faster than that. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When you when you made the 2016 Olympic team, did you essentially like stop uh, doing football practice? Like you mentioned that you, uh, you know, leading in NCAAs, you don't, uh, you know, go to your football practices for a few weeks. Did you do that after you made the Olympic team, like leading into the Olympics? Or were you still like doing some football uh, summer training and, and whatnot while you were prepping for the Olympics? Um, no, I was prepping just for the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was, I was still doing like meetings and stuff, but like the coach was like, all right, Hey, this, this guy's going to <laughs> this is a big deal. Yeah. 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 Sure. sure. So, which yeah. is great. I mean, it's awesome. It really made me feel good. Like, you know, being supported on both ends. Right. It's not like anybody yeah. was really um, button heads. Obviously I wish like, I could do both a hundred percent all the time. Cause then I would have had a better career in college track and in college football, um, just in general, but you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. So would you say the making the Olympic team was like one of the main motivators for you going pro and track or was like, or did like injuries in football play into your decision to choose track over football? Like what led into 
ultimately going to track? Yeah, um, I would say probably like the injury piece, um, you know, coming off of an uh, ACL injury into 2016 and then recovering and, and making the Olympic team, but then not really doing as well as I wanted. Um, puts a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth, but I was already committed to the football season, you know, that next that next season anyways. Yeah. Um, so when I did end up getting hurt again, I was just kind of like, oh, let me just try to focus on this for a little bit. Um, which doesn't mean, you know, obviously it, it's, it's getting more and more difficult every year I'm away from football. Um, and I'm, you know, I just turned 27 last week actually. Um, so it doesn't mean I'm never going to try to play football again, but, um, you know, I definitely wanted to give myself an opportunity to, to, uh, you know, kind of find what I could do on the track. Yeah. Um, you know, just focusing on that. So. Man, I could I could see that, uh, especially you go and win the gold at the 2024 Olympics. That's like a awesome story to be like. Then you sh- just shift over, get in the NFL, uh, play play ball for a few years. Like that would be that would be pretty hype. Like the the pro, the pro athletes that span across a couple pro sports in their career yeah, is always that's nuts. like yeah that's that's always the sign of like the the best of the best athlete. Like when you can play multiple sports and be the best at multiple sports. That's yeah that's next level. For sure. And I think, you know, a lot of people, some of my friends are like, oh man, like, you don't want to get too old. Like, you got to do it now. I'm like, well, it's too old. 27. I'm like, you're, you're calling Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like, you know, just because they've been in the league for four years now doesn't mean they're old. Right. Yeah. You know, exactly. so. How much, um, um, speaking of like making the very hypothetical transition, how much crossover do you think like in just your skills or athleticism is there between playing football and, and running hurdles? I think hurdles is definitely one of the most athletic events. Um, I would say hurdles and probably pole vault. I was just going to say, yeah, that. definitely. Um, yeah. Just with the amount of, you know, I mean, obviously it looks like one, one thing over and over and obviously it is right. The, the hurdle movement, but you know, there's a lot of things that, are, are incorporated in that, right? Like hip mobility, mm-hmm. your jumping ability, your ability to land and balance, you know, on, on the one leg when you do land. And just general um, precision. Like there's like distance runners have absolutely no precision. The distance runners have nothing of what you just <laughs> mentioned. Flexibility, yeah, Co- mobility, coordination, strength, coordination, jumping. They got none of those things. You, so. you know, <laughs> you know what? And, and to be honest, some distance runners got it, and those are the really elite ones. Exactly, that's right. right. So the ones that yeah. can close a close a race in a twenty five second two hundred yeah. are yeah. are those guys. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Because yeah, when I talked to Clay, me and Clayton actually have a podcast that we do during the season um, called Track Voice Podcast, and we talk about like the hypothetical four hundred. And I'm just like, oh man, I because I've seen Clayton run, I've seen his workouts. I'm like, dude, he's fast. Yeah, like yeah. there's just no nothing, you know, like. <laughs> You know, you can say he's a distance athlete, which he is. And same thing with Donovan Brazier and Craig Ingalls and yep. Matt Central. All those guys are fast. Like if you put them in a street race with like random people, they're going to smoke, smoke everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. But Central ran like that uh, three 800 race. That workout. Yeah. Oh, the three 800 that. workout. That was just like un- absolutely unreal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, so. Yeah, you have. I mean. The, the Olympics for or like any world championship for distance running or mid D is is so much just how fast can you close because most of those races are tactical so it's yeah it's oh like, yeah the who's finals the guy, for sure yeah the final who, yeah. like who's the guy that can uh, basically like you need to be like a twenty two second two hundred guy all out because in the Kinda. race you need to close in like twenty four or twenty five to yeah. to be able to win those races it's just it's nuts so yeah well it's not really d- distance in the traditional sense that most people think of it <laughs> yeah. So going to back to Rio, then talking about the Olympics a little bit, uh, the I guess what the first experience there, I'm, I'm sure. Well, one, mm-hmm. it was your first experience Two, this last Olympics was probably way different with COVID and not being able to go and live life outside of the Olympic Village. But uh, being in Rio, um, going into that, were you like extremely nervous? Like kind of what was your thoughts going into that? Were you going in with the sights of like, I'm going to. I'm going to win gold here. I'm going to medal here. Like how, what were you uh, approaching that meet? Like, yeah, I mean, f- number one, my mentality was to win gold. Right. And that's just kind of how I competed and everything. And, and even in the, in the last Olympics as well. Um, but yeah, for my first Olympics, definitely a lot of nervous energy and, and really a lot of nervous energy in the village. 
um, just all the athletes kind of doing, doing what, doing their thing and then training and working out and stuff like that. But you can kind of tell, like, you know, I've been around athletes long enough to where I can just, you can just feel it when yeah. they're nervous. Um, yeah. Exactly. So that was, and that's kind of a drain sometimes, um, which is the hard part about being in the Olympics, um, you know, 10 to 14 days before your competition. It's just like, uh, like, oh, you're just waiting, you know, you're just kind of waiting. So it's actually kind of nice. It's, it wasn't nice because I would like to have enjoyed Tokyo, um, like the city and just the whole experience. But, you know, being only allowed to go there five days before, um, other than jet lag, obviously, that's a nightmare yeah, in itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, five days before, like, you're pretty much locked in, right? Like, I'm not doing any more training. Yeah. Like, right, I might yeah. I might do a sprint day. I might, go, you know, do my pre-meet hurdle day. But, like, I'm ready to go. Right. So, you know, you can't like, really like, overthink it at that point. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. How, like, what was the difference in vibe between Rio and, and Tokyo? Obviously you stayed much, um, much less time there, but as far as like nervousness, uh, did that still kind of affect the vibe or was it is more so like, Hey, I'm here, I'm going to do my shit and I guess I got to go. Yeah. I think people were probably just as nervous. But uh, it was, you could see it less because everybody was kind of like in their rooms <laughs> hanging out. Right. Sure. And, you know, yeah. cause like, you know, it was masks and stuff and it was actually crazy because the hurdles is towards the end. And so me and Daniel Roberts were on the same flight to Tokyo and we actually missed the team photo. And that's like when the whole news of Sam Kendricks came out um, that yeah. same day, like the next morning. Jeez. Right. So we like missed that debacle and everybody was like, all right, like they, we had a, a meeting with the USOC and all this like stuff. Catch up, about, on, <laughs> catch up on yeah, life. <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. Just just talking about like, you know, max etiquette, like, you know, what you're supposed to be doing, like, you know, do this, do this, don't do that. And so, you know, we're pretty much just locked in. So I was just like, all right, I'm here to compete, go to the mm -hmm. training, the training venue, do my thing, get training treatment for two, three hours a day, eat, eat, hang out you know, whatever, watch, watch the events, go to sleep, try to catch them on sleep, you know, jet lag wise is, you know, when you only have five days to, to, to catch up, uh, the best, the best me uh, remedy for that is just to sleep whenever you're tired. Right. Yeah. So I'm literally just like, Oh, it's like two o'clock. I'm tired. I'll take a nap. Like I'll go train later or I'll train how, before that scale of one to 10. How are the beds? They're, they're good. You know, and that's the thing. Everybody asked me this because this is like a big, this was the big thing on the news. At least in the U S yeah. But I can't, I feel like the beds were exactly the same in Rio. Like they're just like super small. Like, you know, they're meant to be like thrown away because right. Right. Yeah. They're, like they're selling the apartments after we're done competing. They're not sleeping on those beds. Right. Yeah. So yeah, just like the whole Zika thing, right. The whole Zika virus was, was yeah. the crazy thing. And they got to remember that in Brazil, uh, in the summer Olympics, it's the winter in Brazil, which, you know, usually there's not a lot of mosquitoes in the winter. Um, right. And I didn't see any mosquitoes, right? Like, so like, we're just like, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Media lashes onto something and they just well, yeah, drive, no one drive was, it into no, the ground. Yeah, no one's yeah. worried about it in Brazil, but like, you know, all around the world, everybody was like, oh, like, you gotta, like, you gotta be careful not to get Zika. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> So. How, how quickly did you have to leave after your final in Tokyo? Did they, they made you leave within like a day or two, two days, right? Two, two days, days. Yeah. So oh, that, yeah, I, that's a bummer. Yeah. And obviously I was bummed out because I felt like, you know, I was in good enough shape and ready to, to win, which, you know, like you say, you run that race 10 times, it could probably be different every time. And that's the, that's the hurdle right. event. Um, so, you know, then, you know, so I'm upset for, you know, a few hours, but then, Hey, I got, I still got a season to complete. Right. Like, which is my goal right when I finished that I was like, Hey, all right, now I just need to run fast. Like when all these, when all these events I have set up, which exactly. I won most of them and you which did is good. Yeah. 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 Got under 13, which is hype to see. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, wait, so I'm, I'm assuming, I, would you say you were more disappointed in this fourth place than fifth place in the, the first limit? Did you have higher expectations this time around? Um, no, I would say the same expectations. Okay. Um, you know, in 2016, I think I was very just like whirlwind season, right? Like I had a really good season in college um, and I was just running, you know, when you're in college, you just run every weekend. So I was super competitive. I, I actually didn't lose a race until the Olympics. Um, right. So, uh, you know, when that happens, I'm kind of like, all right, well, I just got to focus on football because that's, you know, like our first game was like seven days after that. Jeez. Um, <laughs> And in 2021, 
the Tokyo Olympics. Right. I was coming off, coming off an injury. So the, the real sentiment there was like, oh, am I going to even make the Olympic team? Right. So like, obviously I made the Olympic team. So the goals change mm-hmm. then, right. Like, okay, now it's time to win the Olympics, you know, run fast, do focus on this. But like I said, uh, you know, you run that race over a lot. It could happen differently. All those guys are great competitors, super fast athletes. Like it's one race in my, you know, long career. Hopefully that doesn't make or break my legacy right? Um, by any means. Like you said, I still got some 2024, 2028 chances as oh, well. For sure. For sure. Speaking I, of like comparing the, uh, you know, the Olympics to regular events, like where does that level in your head of like, um, you know, USA championships versus, Olympics and kind of just like your regular season. Cause I feel like everyone always puts a lot of stress on the Olympics, which I think might be more true for distance events. Yeah. I, people, people like go all in on the Olympic year, you right. know, or train harder in yeah. the Olympic year or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know what, what's your, do, do you feel that extra pressure in the Olympic year or not? <sighs> no, I, I, th- I think me personally, I don't, I, I kind of like I'm trying to run fast and win every race every year. Like every right. time I show up, I'm trying to compete. Um, I do think though on the American side, and this could be a hot take is that the Olympic trials is the second hardest meet in, in a, in a year, right. If you have the Olympics, Olympics would be number one and the Olympic trials is number two. Right. And, and they have that weird grading scale on the IAAF, whatever, where, you know, the U S Olympic trials doesn't get really many points in all the diamond leagues and the gold meets and silver meets and bronze meets get more point, you know, rank wise, but it's literally like the hardest, you know, most competitive, one of the most competitive meets in in the world. Um, and, you know, just a lot of pressure, uh, a lot of things going on with, with the people there and everything like that as well. So um, definitely becomes where people go all in for the Olympic trials, right? Like they're like, oh, I got to, I, you know, I, I just got to make the team. Like they're yeah. gonna go, I gotta go all in for this, and sometimes that happens, and you see a couple guys that are burnt out in four weeks, yeah. which happens. I mean, I'd rather be there at the dance than not get a ticket. Yeah, of you course. Know, yeah. At least, at least, at least I can show my moves or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, but that's the thing, right? So, uh, and that and that can happen. Obviously, I felt I felt great uh, at the Olympics. I ran fast, and I ran fast at, after the Olympics as well. Yeah. Uh, you could probably say maybe I just didn't have enough time um, in the season just with, you know, with kind of how my buildup went into 2021 anyway. So um, but now that I'm healthy and been training for like the last three, four weeks now, like my first time in my career training in December, like this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it should be good. So so, so what, what was it like to see Snoop and uh, Kevin Hart reacting to your dance moves on the track? It was pretty funny. I had probably like. 40, 50 people text me that, like, I like, did like rewind to their TV and like hit the phone recording. Um, no, it's sick because like, you know, I actually met Kevin Hart when he came to Oregon uh, for like a comedy show when it was like one of his specials was was out, which is great because the football team got like a little, uh, like a meet and greet. We gave, nice. him, like, we gave him like a Kevin Hart jersey, uh, Oregon jersey. And then, oh, hell yeah, uh, that's cool. Obviously Snoop Dogg is like the legend of, you know, hip hop and rap. So you know, just to have, and he was an Oregon fan as well. That's, that's just me personally, because he, he was coached to Anthony Thomas when he was growing up and Anthony Thomas went to, um, Oregon and all that stuff. So it's just kind of cool. Um, just get some love for those guys. So, you know, and they were talking crap though, but they, I'm, I'm, I'm pop locking better than both of them. I know for, <laughs> yeah, for real, <laughs> yeah. especially right after a race when you're whatever, you're tired, you're like your head was in a completely different well, space. No, and that's and the thing. People are like, do it. People are like, oh, do you plan out these celebrations? And I like, I say no. And like, I had another interview, they're talking about like uh, focusing for a race. And for me, it's just like, if you focus for too long, it like, it takes a lot of energy, you know, yep. to do that. So I'm like, maybe five seconds before they say it to your marks. And then right when you finish, I'm, I'm going clear of it. Like it's just yeah. done. Right. Yeah. So at that point I was like, oh well, crap. Like I saw the camera on me. I was like, oh, it's my chance. <laughs> so, are you one, are you one of the guys that rolls up to the start line and just like yawns for a little bit while they're while everyone's getting set? That's a uh, good question. I wouldn't say yawn physically, but I would say that I'm a little bit more like overall, just a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you know, and everybody's different. Some people are super like locked in and they do fine. 
you yeah. know, like with that. Um, so, you know, some people like, you know, it's always funny at the line. Some people like talk to themselves, you know, stuff like that. So I always just like, Oh, wow. <laughs> what's yeah. the, what's what? the weirdest, um, like warm up routine you've, you've seen the weirdest <sighs> or just like I the mean, weirdest shit somebody said to themselves. Uh, no, on it's, it's kind of hard. So a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of the times, you know, we run against competition that's not, you know, American. So. They're just like screaming or yelling like stuff in their language. Yeah, you don't even know. Right, so I, have no, I have no idea what they're saying. So I'm just like, oh god. They could be, they could be praying. They could be saying like, oh fuck this guy next like, to me. I'm, exactly. I'm, the man. Yeah. I'm gonna kill it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and and that's that's the truth. So and whatever you know, whatever they need to do to get themselves hyped, more power to them. Yeah. So yeah. are you like a like are you like a pump up music right before the race or while you're warming up type of person? Or are you no music? Like what oh, what are you getting hyped up with? So so here's my opinion on music. I do like music, um, but I like to listen to the same things over and over when I warm up because it uh, gives me like a. And this, I was explaining this to my coach because he asked me this because I play the same p- playlist. Um, it gives me like a like a checkpoint of where I should be usually during my warm up when that song comes on. Uh, like oh, usually I, I'm yeah. doing this or like. I've heard oh, I a lot take... of people use playlists. Yeah, like the, the I, same Craig, exact. Craig, playlist. Craig Ingalls was telling us he has listened to the same pre-race like song and playlist for like ten years now. Yeah. Just oh, it's always that routine. Same thing like you're saying. Yeah, exactly. And actually, it changed. It changed for me a little bit, and I don't know what made the change. Um, but for the Olympic trials, I played uh, just the album "Good Kid, Mad City" over and over from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. And I get to about like um, swimming pools. You know, like, yep. you know, like eight or nine songs in by the time I'm, I'm ready to go. So I list, actually listen to that song every single warm up, like Olympics, like Diamond Leagues, all through the season. Like, so I probably have like at least 40 plays of that album. There we go. <laughs> I like your, yeah, your Spotify raps looking some type of way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good choice. Um, so you, you didn't get to do this in Tokyo, but like in Rio, did you get to like after you're done with your races, like get to go out with people from all the other countries and like have nights on the town or, or hang out with them. Like what was that scene like after the races were over? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the thing you do is like, you're just looking like, Hey, what are you doing tonight? You know? <laughs> you're done racing. Um, I'm done racing. Let's so go. Yeah. We actually, a cool thing is I ended up at like a club, um, you know, with most, mostly Americans, but Usain Bolt was there on his birthday. So he was like oh, DJing, man. which was sick. Um, we've got, we went to a, a few parties that are like sponsored, um, you know, events. Uh, there was one, I remember the Red Bull event was pretty crazy. Um, just cause there's like some section off areas for just athletes. Um, so you could like, you know, you get free drinks or whatever and be just athletes, but then you can go into like the big 2000 per person party as well, uh, which is crazy. And then, you know, like in Rio, we were just kind of going, to random places, which, you know, you could say is not that safe, but you know, when you're like 15 deep, it's yeah. not that big a deal. And you got a squad. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, you know, we, and you make friends with other countries and stuff like that. Um, but obviously you gravitate towards your friends, like the people you hang out with most anyways. Um, and then the last night actually, um, and I don't know because they didn't do it in Tokyo, but the last night is a big night just to stay in the village. And so we did that. We actually ended up going to the UK, um, like Olympic, you know, their, their apartment. And we played like beer pong and stuff. And I actually hit the game winner um, oh, baby. with like 60 people watching. It was crazy. So like the table, the table, like the ping pong table was getting so crowded. Like people were leaning on it that it broke. Um, <laughs> so like for like the last four cups, the, the whole, everybody watching was holding the table up so we could finish. <laughs> so did people so. like... Obviously, there's a lot of repeats at uh, in the Olympic Village. Um, did people know about that for uh, Tokyo? I'm sure, like there was definitely athletes there that were there because I, I have videos of it. Uh, one of my buddies, Jeremy Taiwo, took some snaps of the game winner because I, I needed to. You know, I was like, dude, you have that video. I gotta, I gotta put this <laughs> on my wall or something. Make like that shit an NFT or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I'm sure, I'm sure people were like were there, but maybe it was it was a much bigger deal to me. Of course, because because it was USA versus Great Britain, and I literally okay. yeah, I was going to ask who it was against. Beer okay. pong, right? Like so. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. pretty big deal. That's <laughs> so. What what country goes the hardest? Is, is there like a clear winner, or was it just across the board? That's that's very hard to say because I've only been to one Olympics, and that can only be my, you know, my uh, barometer. But f- for the most part, 
just and I'm and not that I've like hung out with these people, but I've just seen them. And most most like I would say Eastern European countries. Yeah. So we started like talking Poland, you know, yeah. Hungary, uh, like all Slovenia's. Yeah. Like you even even you start like obviously Russia is Asia, but like you start getting towards Russia and like Serbia and like they I've I've noticed like seeing some like Ser- Serbians know how to have a good time. They, they're getting, <laughs> like, I just saw people getting after it, like you know, and that's kind yeah. of a joke when we're Serbians on the road. are like the the New Yorkers of Europe, yeah. <laughs> in my in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and I do actually there's you know, one of my buddies, Milan, he's a Serbian hurdler and I mean, he went to school in the U.S., but he's he's a good time to go out with as well. Um, but yeah, I think overall, the, the the inside joke we have when we're traveling on the road is like when we're in Poland or like Hungary or something like that. Like, don't mess with anybody because like everybody's <laughs> like knows jujitsu and they all grew up like wrestling. So like, doesn't matter who who you are. Like, they're gonna they're gonna mess you up, kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I never knew about hungry. That's interesting. <laughs> that is good. So what, what do you have on tap racing wise in uh, indoor season, outdoor season? Uh, do you have some meets lined up coming up? Um, I don't have anything confirmed yet, which is always weird to me because I'm always like, Oh, I, I, I always go to this meet. Uh, but you know, I assume I'm going to go to Milrose, um, which yeah. is like a big thing for us. Um, I know my, my agent, Paul Doyle, puts on the American Track League, so I'll do the American Track League series indoors, you know, wherever he, you know, has those meets. Uh, there's a couple big ones, uh, like the New Balance, you know, that, that's pretty big. Um, the, you know, I think it's Boston something or, yeah. you know. Uh, and then a couple meets in Europe I'm thinking about um, closer towards USA indoor indoors. But I haven't uh, really, you know, confirmed any of those. But obviously, being on the East Coast, for me, it's a little bit easier to get there. Uh, when I was living sure. on the West Coast, it was more like, oh, I don't really want to go to Europe. Because so I was like a 12-hour flight. It's a trek. It's yeah. like 12 yeah. hours in the air, as opposed yeah. to like from, from JFK to London, it's like six hours. Yeah, yeah. it's really not too bad. Yeah. No. How, how has that transition been moving from West Coast to uh, East Coast? You moved there like 2020, right? Switch, yeah, March switch, of 2020. Went back to your college coach and uh, moved back East. Yeah. What's that like? I mean, definitely like climate's different, uh, you know, new new people, new facilities, all that sort of stuff. How, how has it been treating you so far? Yeah, it's good. Obviously, like it's much colder than Phoenix. Um, it's much different than Phoenix living on the East Coast. And, yeah. uh, you know, but the facilities I have at the Naval Academy were my my coaches and where I coach um, are pretty, pretty amazing in general, just like the indoor track weight room and stuff like that, outdoor track. Um, and it's easier to travel from, to be honest, like yeah. going to going over to Europe, you know, is 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 not like a huge hassle now. Like it's yeah. much cheaper too. like saving like a thousand bucks a pop every time I travel when I go to Europe. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's just, it's just kind of hard moving to moving to Maryland in the middle of COVID. Like I have a few friends, like one of the guys actually I went to college with, he was a coach here at the Naval Academy. And then I met another buddy of mine that I'm friends with now, but I just like don't really know anybody out here. So that's why yeah. my Halo game has been on point. <laughs> there we go. Dude, I still can't believe uh, Matt's in Onyx. That's like, what, what percentage of people is that? It's really uh, low. Yeah, I think probably like the top 5% at least. I don't know if he's better at video games or running. Well, obviously running. You <laughs> oh, he's in the top. He's way, yeah, he's, way, he's way higher than the top 5% for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's kind of hard too. Like you said, uh, you don't you don't get as many opportunities to like meet a lot of people. I mean, how many weeks a year would you say on average you're traveling for like races and training elsewhere, meets, whatever? Probably total time. I would say at least a hundred days. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's about what one, I would have guessed. Yeah. Like yeah. one third of the year, I'm I'm probably like traveling. sleeping in a different bed. Yeah. 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 May, maybe even more. Um, depends on the year, right? Uh, like a big a big part base of my training, right? Is like right now I'll be here in Maryland, and then I'll go travel for the European season uh, indoors, and then I'll be come back. And then once like July hits, I'm pretty much traveling from July to September again. So, yeah. uh, but at least one third of the year, I'm probably traveling. Do you, do you enjoy the road? Miles. Uh, yeah. 
I, I don't know. Like some people enjoy it. Some people don't. I, I mean, you get to go some sweet places. So I, I would I would assume there's definitely a lot of perks, but I don't know. Is it get tiring at all? So I guess the, the, the hardest part about traveling is actually the traveling part, like getting there. Because yeah, once right. you're there, it's fine. Yeah. And, and for the most part, these mates do a really great job at like putting us up, right? Like we stay in pretty nice places. For sure. Right. So like, you know, when we go to the Lausanne Diamond League, we're like staying on the, the lake, yeah. you know, in like a super yeah. nice hotel called the Moven Pick. And then we go to like Paris, you know, we're like staying at the base of the Eiffel Tower or something like that. Like it's very cool. So they do a great job at taking care of us. So I can't complain about that. But it is, you know, definitely, you know, when you have to travel and like, you don't always make your own travel arrangements. So, you know, sometimes when you have to get on like a 3.30 bus to like get to the airport by like five to get on a six o'clock flight, you're just like, oh. Yeah. 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 Especially when the especially when the meet is late, you know, like you finish running at like 10 p.m. And you're just oh, like, God. you're all hyped up. Like, so yeah. you're like, you're not going to sleep. And so no, like, that kind of no. messes up your day. Um, yeah, for sure. But it's fun. I usually travel with the pole vaulter, like pole vault crew, like Sam Kendricks and, and Chris Nielsen and, and Casey Lightfoot, actually those three guys I was traveling with the most, um, post, you know, Olympics. And so they're, they're pretty fun. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. We have a couple of listener questions here to close out. Um, okay. Let's get it. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to the listeners. Some- Cause we know you're listening. Oh, we got, oh, we got definitely a lot of people are tuning this is, in for this one. This Don't was, you worry. Um, <laughs> this is probably close to all time high, if not the oh, all time high. Oh, I bet so. You're you're a popular guy. You know? Well, you know what? To be honest, I didn't even see any, like, maybe I'm just oblivious, but I didn't see any promo for this. Like, you obviously asked the social media to ask questions, but I didn't even see. Uh, oh, you can't see the responses, but that goes there, to the beer mile yeah, account. Yeah, there's gonna there's gonna be there's there's uh, gonna be promo. Yeah, so yeah, don't sense. worry. We we record this and then you know make you look really pretty. And then we'll put out some I put think, out some reels. I get think hyped was, up for it. I think he was getting jealous of uh, the Westfly promo. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't I don't know I don't know about that. He probably didn't even see it. <laughs> no, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> Who are I these guys? What? <laughs> they're they're Wait, Ole Miss t- dudes. You should take well, that you got sound good, You got some good some good uh, graphic designers. Is, is this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I like to do some video editing for fun. That's one right, of my you're, you're, one of my you're hobbies. Hired. You're hired. <laughs> yeah, if you, I mean, if you ever need a promo, I can put some beautiful shots to some make some, some clips big beats man. for you. Yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Okay, we've got two people ask the same question here. Your worst hurdle wipeout. Uh, Thank you, Larry the Platypus and Marky Mark. Worst <laughs> hurdle wipeout. To be honest, I only ever fall when I'm demonstrating. Really? So I've done like a few like camps and clinics. I did a I did a clinic. I did a camp in uh in Kenny uh Kenny Bunkport, Maine, I believe, uh, where my coach is from. Um, at a high school, I believe it's called Thornton High School, and we were doing like sprints, jumps, hurdles, like long jump, and it was just kind of like overall track clinic. Me and my training partner Jonathan Cabral were just hanging out with my coach in the like in the nice weather in Maine, um, just you know, just to like kind of get a change of scenery before we went over to London. You know, it was kind of like a pre-camp before mm-hmm. we went to World Champs, and yeah, we were just doing like hurdle drills and like a workout. I just kept falling. Like I literally fell two or three times and you know, the kids are like, what the heck? Like this guy's good. <laughs> um, but, it, but it's a good teaching, teaching moment. Right. Cause my coach is like, Hey, you know, even, even the best in the world fall off. Like days, it's okay. Yeah. Very and, true. And, yeah. So I wouldn't say it's that embarrassing, uh, but definitely for some reason, like it seems like when I'm showing people how to hurdle, like, oh, if I fall. <laughs> are you like overthinking it do you think or are you just like i don't know just maybe i'm trying too hard maybe I'm yeah just right to exactly I'm you're not being just too, flowing at it you're thinking too about it too much yeah. yeah for sure um all right our guy colin haveman wants to know how fast could you do a beer mile Ooh, we might have to get some promo for this i might have to just run one um <laughs> i think should. like a full mile like 1609 meters yep full oh, mile four beers man so I'm running mile like at the max, like my best mile probably ever was probably going to be like close to five minutes. And that's like if I train for it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say six minutes for a beer mile. 
Oh, okay. So that's 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 a very, that's a, that's a very respectable time. I like that. But, so that's, pretty, but that's but that's that's if I trained for it. Yeah, um, for sure. But you're pretty. So you're pretty confident in the drinking part. Like you think you can oh, get I the could, four. I down. could. Yeah, I could. Because they're only they're twelve ounce. Uh, yeah, just four 12 ounce beers. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could knock those out in probably a total time of like ten seconds. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you think have, like have, this? have you guys ever played a burial cart? Obviously, you're distance yes. athletes. Yeah. You yeah. played that. Yeah. Um, because that's the only time I've ever played that was with distance athletes. <laughs> Why um, is it such a distance athlete thing? <laughs> it's, it's just a distance thing. I think it's a distance thing to own a Nintendo 64. That yes, is 100 so what that's what it is. Yeah. And, and then yeah. the Switch when the Switch came out it was a distance. I mean, I have a Switch too. No offense. Shout out to Nintendo. Um, <laughs> But those, you know, distance athletes were the guys traveling with them. So then when we're like, we're playing, you know, so you like, you can't drink and drive and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So what I would do is just like knock it out and then, and then start in. playing. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, obviously like six, seven races in, it's an, it's an issue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, if you ever want to do one of those, we will fly out, watch you do it, make some promo out I of th- it. I think you, know, you should I talk think it would, Matt be great. Central. It's into doing it. Do you yeah. think you could beat him? Oh, absolutely he, not. He's Absolutely he's said not. that. You don't think so? So my my mile, like I would I would do almost anything other anything in the world other than run a mile. But he's he's like, like he's C- said Centro that he has it. said he's told me one time I happened to see him running in Chicago and I started running with him and he's he ha- he said that he doesn't even think he could drink four beers like he's a lightweight quickly. he's a lightweight yeah a lightweight. so I think you might have him just because of that he might end up just standing on the start line drinking that beer for what, like five minutes when did when does this thing happen every year. Uh, so the world, there's a world championship every year. That's usually like in July or August this year. It was in October just because, uh, uh COVID. COVID, it got delayed. Yeah, it um, but there, I don't, it's more of like an underground thing. Like that's do really you, the only do you official have to qualify? race. Uh, y- technically, well, you wouldn't, you could just you, show up. Yeah, you uh, could so show technically up. they like the, the, a race. Yes. They like limit it to a certain number of people per country. And you kind of have to like, you know, submit a video showing that you're, you know, good good at it yeah. but but there's there's other like there's the open race too and honestly yeah if any pro athlete in general wanted to come they would they would just get in because yeah. we could use like use all the hype entertainment that we could get out of it yeah no i would i'd do it i'll do it i'll do it i'm committed to it right now i just don't okay. know when when where or how but i will do a beer mile okay Somehow. hell yeah okay yeah. good all right we got we got your email we'll, we'll figure it out at some point <laughs> Lock me in. all right um Oh, I, I like this question a lot. Okay, this this person is this is from Andrew uh, Benkovsky. He's a D3 track coach, and he says, how do I get the kids to stop riding the bench in football and come out for track instead? How, how do you get these guys that are – they think they're still football players, Yo, but they have talent on the track. How do you get them to want to do track? It's tough because a lot of kids drink the Kool-Aid. I know. <laughs> That Kool Aid is that Kool Aid is sweet. There's no man for there. track and field. <laughs> yeah, and I've yeah. and I've been there, right? Like you know, luckily my, you know, my track career was I was already elite. You know, by the time I got to high school, so like it was kind of known I was going to do track. But I know kids that are very very talented and fast that could have done a lot of great things and 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 a lot of events, even like throwing, jumping, you know, jab, whatever. My advice would be start with the coaches as a, as a track coach maybe through school is like, Hey, I'll run, I'll, you know, volunteer and run your um, spring and summer conditioning programs. Right. Obviously yeah. that's like a, a little bit extra time, but maybe if you commit to two, three days a week um, working on like the tech, the technical side of running um, and then you might, the coaches might see the benefit in that after a year. And then maybe the next year they're like, all right, like we'll let the kids that are fast, like go run track. I like that. Um, That's yeah. good Just advice. because there's not really, there's not a lose. There's no scenario where that's like a bad thing. No. Like no. being faster, even as like a lineman, right? Like, yeah. Like the best lineman I play with in, in, in college are all fast. Like Marcus yeah. Mariota, our quarterback was fast. Yeah. Like, so it's tough. Yeah. That's, that's a tough, that's a tough question and answer just because a lot of coaches and, and that's just like uh human nature to, to kind of be like, Hey, what I'm doing is the most important thing in the world, which it might be, but right. You know, you got to look that's at that's why the, your, the your college, picture. your college coaches sure. were such like, I think an exception to the general rule of like, no, it's like my sport or the highway. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, how fast could you run a 40? Could you beat, could you beat everyone in the NFL? 
Oh man, that's a good question <laughs> because like my confidence would say yes, just because I know I'm super fast. Um, I ran a four, three, two before like, um, and I was doing some 40, just messing around during COVID. Uh, like my coach was timing forties, uh, like just like I would warm up and like do a sprint day and I would just like run 40, 40 yard runs. And he would just time them like when I moved. Yeah. And I've run it. Like I didn't run any slower than like four, three, five. And I've run like four, two, eight, four, two, seven. So obviously the record is four, two, two. And I actually know John Ross really well. Um, Cause we, we, we know each other since high school and, and kind of played in like some, like, you know, passing league and all-star mm-hmm. games and stuff. Um, so I do understand that's fast. But I do believe I'm faster than I was in college. So I would say, yes, I could probably beat most anybody in the NFL. Mm-hmm. There's a few that are legitimately fast. Um, obviously, Tyreek Hill, because I ran against him in high school track. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know he can run. Um, Rashad, Rashid or Rashad Moza. I got to get his name right because I know who he is. But he's a, he's a running back from Purdue. Yeah. Um, who's a legit sprinter. Um, receiver from... Um, he went to Auburn, but he, I don't know where he plays now. Anthony Schwartz is a legitimate guy who ran 10-0. So like, you know, you can't Shit. run, you can't run that fast and not be fast. Right. Like right. Just, yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no 10 guy that's running slower than four or four. Exactly. Like exactly. it just doesn't exist. It's like, it's impossible. Yeah. It's like, it's like an 800 meter guy that runs 45 seconds. You know, he's going to run under 150 if even if he doesn't train. Exactly. Right. exactly. Like if he just shows up, you know, and like, uh, he runs 50, 50 yeah. or, you know, whatever. Well, whatever that is, 55, 55, like he can just do it because he's just got it. So fast. Those, yeah. Right. Those, exactly. Yeah. Those guys got it. So. Exactly. Um, all right. This one's a more interesting one, I guess. Uh, this question is, do you think that football will still be a sport like in the distant future? As in with all everything that's coming out about it, you know, messing, oh. messing up your head and, you know, all, all the issues that come with that. Like, will, will we still play football? in the future. I'm going to say yes, just because the powers that be will just pump the money that needs to go into it to get people to play. It's so entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not even that, right? Like the entertaining, obviously I love football and I played my whole life and I watch it and you guys might be fans too. But when you give somebody $10 million, like they're going to do whatever. Oh yeah. People have done much worse for much less money. money. Yes. So so like, you know, and obviously the CTE thing and the concussion and just injuries and and keeping every health is is important. I think the game is kind of like evolving to that where we're seeing more penalties for egregious hits or just like hits that could be more dangerous. Um, I think the word is egregious. It's not egregious, but egregious. Uh, I thought that's what you said anyway. <laughs> no. So, uh, no. So I think it'll still be a sport. It just might. It just really depends, like, of, on if it fizzles out or not. Like, I think the less and less people that play it as a kid will be less interested in watching it in the future. Right. right? Like, I, you know, I never played give me an example. I never played lacrosse, so I just don't watch lacrosse. Yeah. You, if you don't understand what's going on, it. it's hard yeah. to exactly. watch. Exactly. Yeah. I just, I just started p- playing golf in the last six months and now I watch every single golf tournament. Exactly. It's yeah. exactly yeah. how it works, right? Like you, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're invested in it somehow. So, um, that's where we might see some dip in viewership, but if you keep throwing money at it, people are going to play it. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Um, modeling. So you've done a little bit of modeling, is it is it as simple as just standing there and looking pretty, or is there some technique involved? What, how, how does it work? Dude, I have no idea. Literally, <laughs> literally, literally, the few the few modeling gigs I've done is just like pretty much as much direction as someone could give you. They give me, um, which is great because in in my and, and that's the thing that's kind of rare. And from my uh, my girlfriend does some modeling too, and she says. You know, it gets a little bit more like not cutthroat, but she, you know, she's doing more work. You know, she's like has to know how to do these things. For me, when I was doing stuff for like Nike ads and like the random modeling stuff I do, they're like, oh, just say, hey, just put this on, do whatever. Like, we'll just, we'll just pick the best shots. It was like low key, <laughs> like very, very simple. And like everybody was super nice. 
but from what I've heard is like, everybody's not always like that. So, um, <laughs> I don't know, like people keep telling me to get into it. I'm not really that, uh, motivated or interested. Um, I don't know, maybe like if there's Why not? good enough, I don't know, maybe if there's good enough money in it and there's a yeah. few brands that yeah. I would like, you mm-hmm. know, like that I really enjoy, like, and I tell this to my agent, you know, and I've told this to my friends and stuff like, Oh, so-and-so wants to offer you this amount of money to promote their stuff. And I'm like, Oh, well, I just don't use that stuff. It's so like, yeah, you don't, you don't want to fake do promote it. it. Yeah. No, exactly. no, no. Like I yeah. literally like, I, you know, McDonald's comes to me. I'm like, I can't because I don't eat McDonald's, yeah. Yeah. you know, but if Chipotle does like, okay, fire me up Chick-fil-A, let's go. Like, sure. Yeah. You yep. know, we're talking, we're talking like beer sponsors, right? We could be like blue moon or like, Oh yeah. Corona what's your, or whatever. What's your, uh, like, what's your number one, like potential sponsor? Like if you could pull one out of thin air, what would it be? Like any sponsor or beer, any, alcohol, related? any, any sponsor. Any. Yeah. Yeah. My number one sponsor would be Porsche. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, I, I like cars a lot. Um, it's kind of hard to, to kind of get away from American, uh, you know, manufacturers, but it's just, uh, you know, there's something about a Porsche. I mean, yeah, if they're sponsoring you, that usually means you're getting free product. And in this case, if you're getting some free cars out of it, that's probably a good, a good sponsor to have. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I like, and, and obviously like my, my, one of my number one, like, you know, as an athlete growing up was always getting sponsored by Nike. So like, and I'm sponsored by Nike now. So that's good. Yeah. It's a good so step. On to the next thing now. That's a, that's <laughs> a, that's on a, a weird on the <laughs> Yeah. So, so, what, so what, are, are you more of a beer person or cocktails or wine or what, what would you say your favorite drink is? Uh, my favorite beer is Blue Moon. And that's pretty, just kind of just like basic and simple. Uh, my favorite kind of drink. It used to be an old fashioned because I like like whiskey, you know, like all that stuff. Like, you know, but lately I actually was uh, with my buddy for his birthday and we were doing like tequila water and, te- and vodka water. That's just, I mean, you're just getting hydrated at that point. Savage. No, it, no, no. And here's the thing. Like when you tell people this, it's like savage, savage. But like the next day you feel fine. Tequila water is, I I've, guess, I've yeah. never been hung over on tequila. You're, well, you're not having exactly. any added like sugars or any exactly. like, random like, I'm, crap like, I'm feeling in. good. Like I'm feeling twisted. Like at 2 a.m. I'm not, I'm feeling crazy. And then like 8 a.m. I'm like, oh, let's get the day going. I'm hydrated as fuck. So right, let's give it <laughs> yeah. a go. Let's try New, and, New, and New Year's. New Year's let's do it with right. water. Nothing I'm, else. Well, that's the thing. I never tried it. And until, until like my buddy's birthday was when, um, October. And so like we, you know, we did a few nights in a row and I'm like, man, like it's the best I've ever felt like drinking this whole new world. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right. Last, last one of the listener questions. If you could be a pro in any sport uh, other than track and other than NFL, let's say, what would it be? Assuming you make the same money in any sport. Oh, okay. It's easy. What is it? It's easy now. Golf. Okay. Oh, so six months in you're big golf guy. Yeah. Big golf guy. I only, I, I, so I'm hesitant saying golf over like a formula one driver Mm. just because when you play golf, it's, it's an opportunity to like not be locked in for four hours. Like you're locked in of like a total time of like five minutes in four hours. Right. Like, I guess if you're walking the course, but if you're driving the car, right, you hit the ball, it takes you five seconds and you just kind of get in the car and. (laughs) <laughs> and like yeah. a, as an F1 driver, you got to literally be locked in for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And so like that, like, not that it doesn't sound like fun, but just that amount of stress. I'm okay. I'm all right. I feel like that. golf, I'm, like at F1, you can't really like relax your way into, into doing better. Right. <laughs> I don't think right. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's a very, a very solo endeavor too. Gol- yeah. golf can be, you can make it solo. You can make it a group thing. You can, yeah. You, there's a lot more variety. Plus in, if in you have some too. tequila waters, then, you know, yeah, exactly. It can be as competitive <laughs> as you make it. It can be as non-competitive, right? Like the right. that's why I like it because I'm not like the worst golfer ever. I shoot like 95 to a hundred on average. So. I'd say it's a, I would say it's above average. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in anything, that's probably like, you know, just decent enough to not be chasing my ball all day. Right. Yeah. Which is fine. Right. If it takes, you know, if, if I'm on a par five, if I'm hitting six or seven, that's okay. Uh, 
so that's why I like to have fun. And then most of the time you go like with your buddies, right? So like, that's like the most fun part about it is like, you know, drinking and like for sure playing music and just like talking yeah. crap. Yeah. yeah. Now, now I'm thinking you should do, you should become a three pro sport athlete. You'll have NFL after track. And then by then you're going to be like 10 years into golfing. You could just go golf after that. You got plenty of years I, left on the golf course. Well, and, and that's the thing I'm, I'm, I'm interested in doing like some charity stuff. I do some, I already did charity events with golf. Like that's kind of how I got into it. Um, but like, there's some, I'm not going to say in charity events, there's not really, there's not money to be made, but there's money to be made on like the amateur totally. like celebrity yeah. amateur thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, Cause like I got, I got some friends that do that now that are much older than me. And they're like, yeah, you know, like you pay like five grand to play in this tournament. I'm like, wow. It's like shit. Yeah, it's going to golf yeah. for the day. Usually, and get paid I for pay it? somebody sure. to golf. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> I feel like a lot of runners uh, enjoy golfing too. It's, yeah, it seems like Especially, a lot. Yeah. Seems like a lot of pro runners are kind of into golfing. It's not too taxing of a activity outside of your training, but still, like, I don't know, get outdoors, get a get some a little bit of walking in, get some hanging out in. And, seems and like I a think most most runners are just good athletes in general too. Like, I play right. golf with Clayton. Clayton's like a eighty five guy. I think he's pretty oh, good. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So Just all, yeah. All around athletes. Yeah. He's a good athlete. So you got anything else to close out? That's everything that our listeners had for him. And let's do, uh, let's do words of wisdom. All right. So Adam and I always close our podcast with, with words of wisdom and it, it's usually nonsensical. It's not good. It's just, you know, terrible advice. So could just be what's on you top can, of your yeah, mind. What's right on now. the top of your mind right now. What, what do I you want to leave the listeners? I got with? something for you. Hey, this is, this is a good thing for the listeners. I got a quote from my, my friend Bradley Laubacher. He's a high jumper at Oregon when I was there. He says, two things in this world people like, right? Hot dogs and champions. But no one likes to see them be made. And that's it. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good mic drop. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's good. Drop the mic. Take out drop the headphones. The Let's go. <laughs> That's good. That's good. No, I you. like hey, that. You, you know, like no one really wants to see what's put into a hot dog. No, no one really wants absolutely to see the hard work not. that goes into being a champ. That's so, true. That's I like true. that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on. This is a lot of fun. And yes, yeah, go up, go up Centro's ass and in, in yeah, no, and <laughs> thanks, down, man. Thanks for thanks for cheering me up. I needed it. I was I was going through it. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> hey man, Diamond Three. I, that's that's yeah. pretty fucking good. <sighs> I know. I'm just trying to get. I'm trying to get to Onyx and like whenever I play by myself, I I, I rank up. Yeah, so I start dude, I, with like I, I have the same problem. Guys. I, I have the same problem. problem. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I I start like talking too much to my friends when I play. I'm like, God, I gotta like start ranking up before I'm in like fucking gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> awesome, man. All right, boys. Yeah. So anyway, um, I guess that was Devin Allen. That was Devin Allen. And this is tequila water is tequila sponsored water. by Devin Allen. Thankfully got a homie in the house that has Margaritaville silver tequila. <laughs> Great. Okay. So we already had water in there. Now we're, Adding the other secret sauce. The secret formula. Are we supposed to like stir it? Probably it's probably supposed to put it on I guess ice. with your I guess with your finger. Also, like, are we supposed to have like lime in it or something? A lemon? I think he he didn't say a, a lemon. Are you supposed to do your nose oils in it? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think it works the <laughs> same way oils. without foam. <laughs> All right, Devin. Well, cheers to you. Thanks for coming on. Hope you're beating Centro and Halo now. Oh, actually not that bad. I actually might do this for uh, New Year's. Surprisingly not that bad. I guess it's just diluted enough that it's okay. It's diluted enough to where you can just be like, eh, fuck it. Like, all right, I'll do it. Does the job. Okay, well, I got that one handy. I'll Cheers. sip on that. Actually not that surprising. Like that exceeded all expectations. Completely being honest, I'm not just messing with anyone. The beer of this episode, which I was drinking during the episode, um, wet snout peanut butter stout. Dude, I'll show you a wet snout. Know what I mean? Nah, I don't know what you mean, dog. <laughs> <laughs> they, That's going to be a no for me, dog. I, so the X Factor on that one, I didn't drink it, but I don't really like the way that it, it rhymed. You don't like that? That's no. clever. Sleepy Dog Brewing 
wet snout peanut butter stout stout with natural peanut butter flavor that's too like white people interior decoration like live laugh love for me whoa but we are the live laugh love podcast i would say we're the poop fart pee podcast we, we've never said poop fart pee on this but podcast before. it's like it's like making fun of live laugh love oh okay 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 <laughs> I mean, I actually have a sign above my work computer that says "Live, Laugh, Love" because that's just how I. Fuck up, do you? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't see with the lights. I was gonna say, I was like, I don't know about that. Oh god, this is the amazing taste of peanut butter from a spoon. Has long been thought of as a peak of taste bud euphoria. You that, know, you can do with that. peanut butter and a dog. If put, you're a female, put their treats in it. What were yep. you, th- what were you yep. thinking of? <laughs> that was before you got your paws on wet snout, peanut butter stout, smooth five, and creamy. 5.9? What is that? Peanut 5. butter 9%? flavor blend. Is this ASMR? Perfectly with chocolate. Dude, you know with my nose job, I'm going to sound different on the For point. a treat like no other. A nose job? Who's getting a nose job? Oh, I'm getting a... Hey, uh, listeners, I'm getting a nose job. <laughs> Why? Um, because Fucking, I have a deviated septum and a something, a something. Just, I mean, so do I. Jack's point to me. Wait, so just because you work for a California company now doesn't mean you got to be going and getting plastic surgery all over your so face I, to make you look I think, um I think insurance doesn't actually cover it if you get, because a lot of people use that excuse, right? They're like, I have a deviated septum and then they just get a yeah. fucking nose job. And then they just... Um, yeah. So I, I was going to say something that I shouldn't say. Okay, and, then, and then they get their tits done and they're like, yeah. right. uh, <laughs> and then it goes from there. Um, 200 Botox injections later. So I, I think are. most companies won't cover it if it's, <laughs> I think most companies won't cover it if you do both of them. If you do a, a rhinoplasty. Yeah, rhinoplasty. I know that. The I only nurse, know that. I learned that word from South yes. Park. It was one of the buildings in South Park. That's how I learned that word when I was young. Anyway, finish your story. Sorry, I keep, I keep. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting a, a nose job. Um, all right. So you will hopefully have a less wet snout or to fill with yeah, butter yeah, yeah. stout. Okay. Great Maybe beer. Make me like stouts. What's your what's rating on taste? Oh gosh, I would give it a compared to all beers. I'm gonna give it an eight. What's the ABV? Is it five? Five point nine ABV, twenty five point one IBUs. Um, 69.42 on the, um, PhDs. I don't, what's, what was the other category that we used to say all the I time? I don't even remember. Uh, no, it's actually really good. I like stouts sometimes, but this is, peanut butter stout is like, is your X factor the, the rhyme? No, I actually just read that now for the first time after I drank it. So no, that didn't influence my taste at all. Great beer, drinkability. Yeah, you know, like a four or something. Pretty low. It's like a dessert. Din- you have dinner one beer. Yeah, dinner beer, beer, dessert beer. And X Factor. I'm kind of digging the live, laugh, vibe up. La- live, laugh, love, vibe up. Blah, 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 live, laugh, love, vibes. <laughs> Dude, please put that in the intro. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Maybe I'll go in there. We'll see. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, do, you have anything Great else, beer. do you have anything else to plug today? Uh, nothing else to plug. You guys are the sponsors. Patreon.com slash beer mile, and you will give you your free gift in the mail when you sign up. And uh, well, I guess we got yeah. um, we got probably an after dark and a, a winter special episode coming up. It might have been before this or after this. I don't know. Yet. OK, we'll, we'll see. I don't Go. know when this episode's out, to be perfectly honest. Um, shout out to Craig Light for you to drink a Bud Light. Craig, did I just say Craig Light? Oh my goodness. I, shout out to Craig Angles, afraid to drink a Bud I Light. I thought you were going to say shout out to Craig Light, afraid to drink a Bud Angles. And I was like, I wish I would have thought of that, damn it. Oh, this is off the chain. Okay. Uh, what, other, what other sound bites can we throw in here in the last oh, there's two some minutes? good ones, man. For the one percent of listeners that are listening this far in, <laughs> got any TikToks that are on your mind, Mister TikTok? No, just while we wait, we hydrate. That's it. There you go. All right, that's words my words, are, words of, wisdom of wisdom for today. While you're waiting, be hydrating. Right on. <laughs>